hi guys good to see you again um i've got a really really lovely book to share with you today unfortunately this book is so good i couldn't hang on to it <laughs> i had to send it to my sister um to read but i made some notes and uh, i've written my review um for strokesonpaper.com and I'm just about to give you the lowdown on this fantastic, fantastic book, um, The White Tiger. <sighs> I've got a very big note. <laughs> so, um, so The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga. It's, it is one of the best books I've, I've read in a while. Um, this Man Booker Prize winning debut novel by Aravind Adiga is a masterpiece honestly um there's a movie adaptation um which is one of the best novels and movie um adaptations ever um it came out on, on netflix to critical acclaim in 2021 and honestly that was what i first saw i saw this movie and i was like wow and then i realized that the movie was based on on a novel and i wanted to be sure to read that novel and i finally did um, so, and I couldn't fat, uh, I couldn't fat not, not wait, um, after reading it, I had to share with my sister, so, um, I sent it, so she's a gale to my, um, Oprah, <laughs> okay, so I sent her the book, and right now she's just screaming, um, about how wonderful it is, anyway, um, so, and then the movie, uh, it was really fantastic. It had uh, Priyanka Chopra Jonas uh, in it, and it was just a lot of fine acting. And you know, it just feels so realistic. And um, unlike many other novels that became movies, I really, really love this one. Okay, so um, so if you if you don't find the novel or you haven't got a lot of time to read, you can watch the movie while you wait to you know for a chance to read the book. Anyway, so, uh, so this book um, is really ingenious, um, a very ingenious literary piece by uh, Indian journalist and writer Adiga. Um, so the novel's plot unfolds as a letter written in seven consecutive nights by the protagonist, Balram. So when we meet Balram, uh, he's a successful businessman with a fleet of luxury taxis um, which caters to the team in tech startups uh, and outsourcing companies in Bangalore uh, in India. India is quite um, famous for this. Um, so this letter is being addressed to the Chinese Premier Wen Jiabo. I don't know, my Chinese is terrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so it tells the story of Balram's rise from abject poverty and servitude in his village to the entrepreneur he now describes himself as. So he begins by narrating the peculiar story of his childhood um, as the son of a rickshaw puller in Las Manga. Um, so as a child in a very large, typical uh, extended family setting uh, in India, grappling poverty and, and, and want, you know, with serious, uh, I don't know, like, being like at the lowest rungs of society, um, Baram shows great academic progress, um, even being described by an education uh, supervisor as a white tiger. That's where he got um, his title from, uh, which is what he then calls himself. So the supervisor visits his neglected village school um, and you know nobody else is forthcoming with answers to the questions that he poses to the students apart from uh, Balram so um, so he's offered a scholarship but before the date of his departure to a better school away from the village his grandmother um, who is this really really well, she's like the head of the family she forces him to leave school and work instead in a tea stall because a dowry for his cousin's wedding has further plunged the family uh, into debt, um, you know, the debt of the shrewd landlord and um, very mean businessman nicknamed the stork. So um, while working at the tea stall, something happens. Um, 
he's working with his elder brother at Dem, uh, i think was that the name of the place i'm not sure but he's working with his elder brother kusum i think um so baram learns about the indian government and the economy through the conversations of the tea stalls customers so he's a very good listener he's always been um you know one of those people who just um sort of just watches people and learns you know um so when his father dies from tuberculosis and the lack of medical staff uh, at the community hospital Baram works for a while with his, uh, with his brother uh, Kasum in Dambad before learning how to drive so somehow he picks a conversation where it just turns out that drivers were making a lot of money you know and he just needed to get out of this life of um you know servitude so he decided to learn how to drive so and then of course he wanted a uniform um diga tells this a really really moving story uh, about how people in the darkness which is how he refers to um, those from the lowest caste uh, in Indian society. They were very impressed with uniforms. Um, you know, a uniform meant that you were a bit successful. Um, so, uh, Balram is really stoked about the idea of a uniform. So, um, well, it was aspirational, you know, for him, aspirational to wear a uniform, to be a driver, to learn something. So, um, so after paying for his driving lessons, his authoritarian grandmother makes him swear that almost all his income from driving will be sent home. Um, so Baram schemes his way to the home of the stork, member stork uh, from the village, you know, that his family was owing, and becomes a driver to his newly returned son, Ashok, and his American wife, Pinky Madam. Uh, so when Ashok is to move to Delhi, and the older driver, Ram, uh, who was with the family before Baram's arrival? Um, of course, he's a likely candidate to go with um, with a shock, mm, Baram. So, um, apparently, it's an honor for a servant to go to jail for his master, mm. and uh, and his grandmother is aware that he's going to do this. This is going to be his fate. So. Um, and it is at this point that Balram begins to seriously question, you know, um, everything happening around him. Uh, and then he begins to seriously consider breaking out of this metaphorical chicken coop. Um, so he describes this as the servant's bane in India. Um, the poor are like roosters in a cage um, at the market, watching their numbers decrease as customers come and you know point at them and they're, and they're and they're slaughtered and you know packaged for the customer and the other ones are still there even when you open it nobody runs off uh well that's not to say the chicken or people but you know none of them escape because they've been conditioned to think that this is their ultimate um destiny to to die in this manner so and you know um they keep waiting patiently uh, for their own moment of, of death. So, and, and Balram in this, in this letter that he writes to the Premier tells him that this is the problem of, of poor people in India and this mentality of servants and, you know, people who don't think that they deserve more or that they can break out. So, um, in the end, the case is dropped, uh, you know, the um, hit and run, uh, as no family comes forward to claim the dead child. Obviously, they're poor and homeless. Uh, who are they to... Uh, you know, to go to the police and say, hey, uh, one of our kids was knocked down on the road uh, in the middle of the night. Because, I mean, what was the kid doing on the middle of the road, um, in the middle of the road at night and whatnot? So, um, but Pinky Madam, who's been unhappy, uh, she just, at this point, decides that she's had it. Uh, of what kind of family is this? And why is Ashok not going back to the US, you know, where they had come from? And all of a sudden, he's taking over this this branch of the family business is going to be bribing um, politicians and, you know, doing whatever it takes, you know, in town for his family to run their businesses without, I think, paying tax. Yeah, so, and she's had it. So she leaves her husband and returns to America. Um, so as soon as she leaves, of course, Ashok spirals out of control. He becomes this whole new person and this whole new person that he becomes i mean is someone that even baron does not recognize um so so but um um he continues to participate in you know 
bribing government officials uh, for his family to evade tax. Uh, and then on one occasion when Barham takes him to drop off a huge bribe, he, he Barham, stabs him. Yeah, with a bottle and, and makes away with the money to, to Bangalore where he bribes police and other officials to run his business undetected. Um, even though uh, whew, there's a ransom of one million rupees for his capture. I mean, it was at this point in the movie that I was like, oh my gosh, why? You know, he could have taken the money without actually killing uh, Ashok. You know, you could have just escaped and whatnot. And of course, it's the same fate that's going to be for his family. They're going to be looking for him. But at least Ashok is going to be alive. That was horrific to me and I still find it really really uh, troubling that he killed him and you know he makes away with the money so but like um, Barham observes his image on the poster could be every poor man in India you know the, the image of him they have on this um, missing person uh, not missing person um, you know wanted person uh, poster it doesn't even look like him anymore you know so um, he imagines the stalks rampage on his family back at Ras Alas Manga, um, but decides that his freedom is worth, you know, worth more than the lives of all those people back home, you know. Uh, so to navigate his way from an um, underclass caste into success, Balram has to sacrifice Ashok and uh, ultimately his entire family because he imagines the, sh the stork is going to go take vengeance on them for the death of his son and we don't actually see that but he knows uh, that's a possibility and, and one day he sees in the newspaper a family of 17 killed in a northern village or something and he just imagined that his family but he didn't bother to you know he couldn't face that you know so um uh, in the novel, Adiga explores themes of freedom, caste, classism, as well as political and economic corruption, while giving an intimate view of India along the way. I mean, there are so many things about that country as you learn uh, while reading this book, which is one of the reasons, you know, I believe that reading is a superpower. It's absolutely fantastic to read because you learn about all these different cultures, learn about all these different things happening around the world, and you're like, wow. Um, because it's a really deep um, look at you know what's going on and and for me uh, this book you know ju just offers us that intimate look um, into uh, India so uh, and um, from the perspective of a dirt poor person who made it into success by committing a gruesome murder uh, there's humor and a certain beauty in the evolution of Balram uh, into a shock his uh, adopted name in Bangalore. So in Bangalore, he, he then takes the name of the man that he killed. Imagine killing someone, running off, wanting to start a fresh, uh, you know, wanting a fresh start, and then taking on the name of the person that you killed to get there. Ooh, Baram is one twisted guy. So, um, and the intricate webs weaved in between, uh, you know, these are the things that we see in the novel, and um, telling the story as a letter authenticates experiences shared and gives a definite place to India's invisible poor. Um, so the murder also opens up discussions on right and wrong and the true cost of freedom. Atika's work is a must read. Uh, absolutely. So um, do read it and um, uh, share your thoughts. And um, as usual, go to www.trucksandpaper.com for a written review and please let me know your thoughts and uh, if you have any more questions or you want us to discuss this further, you know what to do. Comment, uh, subscribe, and share, please. Um, anyway, um, enjoy the rest of your day. And I have just recently started, you know, uploading videos to the lectures uh, portion of this channel. Um, I'm teaching things from um, creative writing to, um, you know, um, just uh beginning beginner level stuff uh, um, grammar uh, you know, literature um, gcsc level stuff a levels whatever so just um uh, look at it and see if you find it helpful please if you are new try to subscribe and share thank you so much i will see you in the next video bye, -bye.